subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN UGC NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So today we are going to look at some basic operations on signal various. Time operations on signals. So uh, basically we are performing some operations with the argument of a signal with the time domain of the signal. So various uh, possible operations that we are going to look at is time shifting, time scaling and time reversal. So what happens is suppose we have a function of this form f of t which means that this is a function of time. So this, this time is known as argument of the function. This t is known as argument. Right? This is known as argument of the function. So sometimes according to, according to the need, according to some uh, operation that is required, we may be required to shift a signal or uh, compress a signal, expand a signal, reverse a signal, flip a signal. So for doing all this, what we have got to do is see if I am multiplying, dividing, doing something with the function itself. Suppose I am doing something like this 2 plus ft, 2 ft, 1 by 2 ft. These type of functions are going to affect the value of the function, okay. These are going to affect the output of the function. But when I am performing some operations like this, f of t plus 2, f of 2t, f of t by 2. See first thing that you need to understand is these two are different things. When I am multiplying, dividing, adding something to the function then it changes the output of the function, it changes the value of the function. When I am performing the same operations with the argument of the function then the function is just going to shift, compress, expand in time domain. Okay, We are going to uh, make changes to its time domain. The function is just going to shift on the x axis okay on the argument axis when i am performing these kind of functions these kind of operations on a function the value is going to change on y axis okay this is going to affect the functions output or the y value of the function now we are going to look at uh, one by one all the operations so the first operation that we are looking at is time scaling right time scaling. Uh, for explaining this, I am just taking a example of a rectangular pulse. So suppose you are having a pulse like this, a pulse which occurs between t is equal to minus 1 to t is equal to 1 and has a value of 1. Okay. So this is our original function ft. Now I am just performing a time scaling operation. What happens in time scaling is we are multiplying the argument. Okay, When I am scaling this uh, time domain, when I am scaling the argument, I am just multiplying it with some constant a. Now a can be any value. Okay, It can be greater than 1, it can be uh, less than 1, any value. This is just a constant. You are multiplying the argument with a constant. So what happens is, see there are two possibilities. First case is when a is greater than 1, okay, suppose, suppose let's say I take it as 2, then the function is going to become f of 2t. Now see what happens is this function ft originally was defined something like this. This had a value 1 whenever t was lying between minus 1 and 1 and 0 otherwise, 0 otherwise. So this is what our original function was like. Now I have made some changes to its argument. Okay. Now whenever you try to plot a function, you are not going to take 2t here, right? We are only, always going to have t only. So now I want to make some changes to the function, some changes to its value, some changes to its domain such that I can plot this function also as a function of time only, not as a function of 2t. So now what do I do is, with the help of this function ft, what do I do? I make changes to its domain. This is known as domain of the function. Domain are the possible values of t for which the function is defined. Now what happens is, 
this function is going to become something like this okay this had value 1 for t lying between minus 1 to 1 but now since the argument is not t it is 2t I just simply put 2t here 2t and 0 otherwise now see this is how this function is going to be defined right this is how I defined this function because its argument was t now the argument is 2t so I have just replaced t here with 2t now see when I try to make this argument as t again if I want to make this as t again this is just a simple inequality if you just want to make this as t again what you have got to do is just multiply divide all these numbers with 2 I'm dividing all them all of them with 2 what does this become then it becomes 1 for all values of t between minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 and 0 otherwise okay so this is how the function's domain has transformed previously the function was lying between minus 1 and 1 but now the function has compressed see the domain the possible values range of values between which the function can now allow uh, lie has shrinked from minus 1 to 1 to minus 1 by 2 to 1 by 2. If I just sketch this function, if I just try to sketch this function, it is going to lie between minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 with the value of 1, the value of 1. Okay, so this is how we are performing time compression. This is known as time compression operation. Whenever you are multiplying the argument of function with the uh, with any value, any constant which is greater than one, the function is going to compress in time. So this is a time compression. Similar to this, we can have time expansion also. If the constant a is any value which is less than 1, then we are going to have time ex uh, expansion. Just look at it once. If this value of a is going to be less than 1, okay, right? Suppose uh, I've got f t by 3 ft by 3 then we are going to have expansion of the signal in time domain how is this happening again see the previously the function was lying between minus 1 and 1 but when the argument was t now since we have changed the argument to t by 3 what happens is this this t i am going to replace with this t is going to get replaced with t by 3 t by 3 Right. Now what do I do to make this t again because I want to plot it as a function of t only. So what do I do? I just multiply all the numbers with 3. Then I am going to obtain something like this. So previously which the function which was lying between minus 1 and 1 is now going to be between minus 3 and 3. So th this is how time expansion is occurring. Okay. Firstly the function was lying only between these points but now it is lying it is having a wider range of domain okay if I just plot this function so now it is going to lie between minus 3 and 3 which is time expansion time expansion Right. So these are the two uh, possible uh, cases in time scaling, time compression and time expansion. So if I am multiplying with a constant greater than 1, I am going to obtain time expansion and if I multiply with a constant which is uh, less than 1, then I am going to, uh, sorry, greater than 1, then I am going to obtain time compression. Fine, so this is all about time scaling. You just, what uh, is the easiest way is just change the argument, just replace the argument with the required argument and perform some operations such that the limits may change but this argument remains t only okay so you can just obtain that uh, between with what values this function is going to lie see if i had performed the same operation of uh, multiplication or division with the function that is if i would have required to plot 3 f of t or f t by 3 
then this value, this value of the function, this output of the function would have changed. The domain, the time axis would not have been uh, changed, okay. Next we are going to look at time shifting. So next we are going to look at time shifting operations, okay, time shifting. So previously we had a function, originally we were having a function ft. Now when we are going to perform time shifting operations, that is we are going to add or subtract some particular interval, some particular constant to the uh, argument of the function to t. What happens is, see when you are adding a number, the function is going to be delayed, okay. The function is going to advance in time and when we are subtracting some constant, the function is going to be delayed, shifted to right. Okay, how is this happening? <coughs> Okay, so we are again taking the same pulse for this purpose. So we are considering this pulse only for the same uh, for this purpose also. So suppose firstly I am taking f t plus 2, okay. I am just adding 2 to the argument. Now see. Uh, as we have done in time scaling, we are going to do the same thing in time shifting also. I am just going to replace the argument by, with t plus 2. So what happens is previously the function was 1 for t line between minus 1 to 1. Now since the argument has changed from t to t plus 2, I am just going to put the argument as t plus 2 here. t plus 2 here. Okay and 0 otherwise. Now see. What happens is when I try to make this argument as t again, when I want to make this function as a, uh, make this signal as a function of time again, what I have to do is I just have to subtract 2 from all these values. This is a simple inequality. When I subtract 2 from all these values, this argument is going to become t again, right? So when I just perform this operation, what happens is when you subtract 2 from here, you're going to obtain minus 3 t and minus 1. So again now see the function which was previously lying between minus 1 and 1 is now going to be between minus 3 and minus 1. See the duration of the function has not changed in this, this case okay. It was uh, the duration was 2 units before also now also it's going to remain 2 units only. The only difference that is going to be is that the function has just shifted okay. It has shifted towards the left or advanced. Uh, if I just plot this function, it is going to lie between minus 3 and minus 1. Okay, value is not going to change again. So, this is what this is time advanced. Advancing in time or left shift left shift okay so the function has just shifted to left by two units or advanced in time right so this is what is going to happen when you are adding a constant to the argument next if you are just subtracting a constant from the argument that is suppose i uh, take an example i am i'm taking f of t minus 3 what happens is again to the argument what do i do is i just replace the argument of the function with t minus 3. Now if I try to make this argument as t again I have to add 3 both the sides which makes this 2 to 4. Right. So now also the duration of the function is not going to change. Just the intervals with, uh, within which the function is lying are going to change. Previously it was lying between minus 1 and 1. Now the function is going to lie between 2 and 4. Okay. So it has just shifted right. Shifted to right. So this is known as time delay. So this function got delayed in time axis. Okay, time delay or 
right shift so whenever we are subtracting t naught the function is going to shift to right okay which some function is going to have a right shift or delayed in time and whenever we are adding some t naught then the function is going to shift left or advance in time fine so this is all about time shifting how you are going to perform time shifting next we are going to look at time reversal so what happens in time reversal is we are just replacing the argument of the function of ft ft to f of minus t okay we are just putting a negative sign with the argument reversing the function in time now see what happens is Suppose a function was defined between some intervals. Suppose f t was 1 from interval minus 1 to 1. Now what happens is when we are reversing it in time axis f minus t. You just change this minus t. Just changing the argument to minus t. Now to remove this minus sign from the argument what I need to do is just multiply all the numbers with minus. But since we know the rules of inequality, whenever you are uh, multiplying the, an inequality with minus 1, inequality reverses. So this is how it is going to be. Okay, so now uh, see this was a symmetric pulse. So again the function is going to lie between minus 1 and 1 only. But uh, if we had considered another signal, okay, uh, just, just have a look. Suppose the signal was lying between minus 2 and 1. Now when you multiply it, this is going to become... 2 and minus 1 so then uh, previously which so this function was looking something like this before and now after time reversal what is going to happen is this function is going to look like this so what happened is it just flipped okay it just swapped along y axis all the values in time all the time values have changed their sign just negated the values okay so this is how time reversal is going to happen uh, now there are several points that we need to keep in mind while performing these operations